Haywards Heath, a wealthy town in the heart of West Sussex. Close to London, it's flush with young fashionable commuters and rich professionals looking for a flash meal out. A really exciting, vibrant little town. Everything's here, banks, restaurants, brands. I have to say, absolutely ideal for a local, good, renowned restaurant. But the aged priory isn't attracting the young and hip. It's more saga holiday than Club 1830. The restaurant's stuck in a time warp, turning out old-fashioned carvery every day for the past 20 years. Like a sausage? Yes, just one, please. There you go, my dear. Thank you. At home, you know, you never have a big joint, and it's really lovely to have something off a, a really nice big joint. Former IT consultant Scott Aitchison brought the Priory six weeks ago for 300 grand. He's acquired a business losing 5,000 a week. But what the hell? He's ended up with a beautiful building. I've always really wanted to, to be a restaurateur, I guess. This place has got so much character, so much charm that, you know, I don't think I can fail to ever tire of walking through that restaurant with those windows, you know, it's just amazing. Set in the chapel of a 19th century convent, the Priory certainly is a heavenly venue. Bangers are swearing. God, it's beautiful. Very gothic. Sister Wendy is about to jump me. Fuck me. Look at her. It's beautiful. Here's the vicar. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, Scott. Scott. Gordon, nice to see you. It's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, you are the... I'm the owner. Owner. Good to see you. What a beautiful place. Thank you very much. Uh, amazing. It's, it is magnificent, isn't it? That's beautiful. And the carvery's been here for 20 years? Yes. So it's almost sort of the heartbeat of the restaurant? Yeah, it's the tradition around here. If you talk to people uh, about the Priory in Hayward Seath, then they will, you know, they will say, oh, yeah, I've been there, but they've all been for carvery. Never been to a carvery for ages. Last time I went, I think it was um, back in 1982, called the Burnie Inn. And it was a Sunday lunch, and it was fucking ghastly. The Priory's food must be denture friendly. This place is rammed with the Blue Rinse Brigade. I'm the youngest here by miles. It's almost like they've opened a soup kitchen for the elderly. And it's a sort of glamorous old people's home. But my age concern is explained when the golden oldies keep turning up with suspicious looking vouchers from the local papers. We offer two meals for price of one. It's 9.99 for, is that for? That's for your carvery. You put a discount on 9.99? We do. So, how much discount? Um, it's buy one, get one free. Um, so it's 50%? It's, um, so you eat here for five Um, yes. I'm starting to feel left out. Am I the only one here without a voucher? Did you bring your coupon? Yes, I did, yep, two. And did you bring your voucher today? Yes, yes. And did you bring your coupon? <laughs> That's what we get. <laughs> That's what we get. I mean, it's cheaper to come here than it is cooking at home. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, for two, it's just a really marvellous value. You must have dementia to only let half your punters pay. No wonder this business is losing money. The food's a bargain, assuming it's up to scratch. Toby's the Priory's head chef. His claim to fame was a stint at Planet Hollywood. He's the starship trooper in charge of the carvery. I don't very much eat roast dinners when I'm at home nowadays. Doing them every day, but I still eat them. As you say, never trust a skinny chef, do you? His sidekick, Bob, is the part-time carvery chef. Right, what have we got? You've got turkey here. Yes. Right, you've got um, get a gammon, river beef, pork and lamb. So these are done every day? These are every day, yeah. So what, what, what stuffing That's is that? That's peach and nut bound with an orange juice. And it's rather nice, so they tell us. Peach and nut yeah. bound with orange juice? Yeah. And that's a dauphinoise. This is a throwback, isn't it? I have a little bit of the dauphinoise. OK. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> Jesus. And all that for a fiver? Yeah. <laughs> Just enjoy it, Gordon. <laughs> Fucking hell. Roast potatoes cooked to fuck, and stuffing that was like sort of trying to cut through a silicon implant. And it... Oh, dear. Yorkshire pudding, well, it's soggy. 
And Turkey, well, bloody hell. It's just so dry. Pasty. Even the quality of the beef. It's dry. That is shocking. We're still stuck in the doldrums here, and all I've had today so far has been shit. Shit at its best. Stiff Scott certainly got himself a celestial building, but that pitiful excuse of a carvery is a mortal sin. Okay, right, who haven't I met? I haven't met. Hi, right, Matt. Matt, good to see you. And you do? General manager. General manager. Owner? General manager. And you Stuart. must be the kitchen manager. No, 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 no. He was. That's his department. No, Stuart. Stuart. And what are you, buddy? Uh, I generally do the general cooking of the veg and general. Right. The kitchen. Okay, this man we, we yeah, met. Me. You look so different with your hat off. I know. Good. Yeah? Mm. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, I'm Tom. Tom? Yeah. And what do you do? I'm a trainee chef. Trainee chef, yeah. excellent. Good. And you're studying uh, cooking. <laughs> Good. And this is? Toby. Toby. Yeah. How chef. are you? I'm not bad. Good. Head chef? Yeah. Good. And you're completely responsible for? Yeah. Everything that goes on. So. The whole food? Yeah. yeah the whole food. Yeah? yeah. So, Matt cooks some of that sometimes. sometimes. So you're a chef as well? Uh, I've trained as a chef, yeah. Oh, Long good. Ago, yeah. So proper all-round general manager? Uh, I'd like to think so, yeah. I was really excited when I walked in. I was, seriously, walked up the stairs, and Christ, it's quite breathtaking walking through that door. And unfortunately, the carvery, it was dry, it was hideous, it was overcooked, and it tasted of nothing. Sat alongside plastic Yorkshire puddings that I wouldn't even use as a fucking ice hockey pot. I mean, you know, as a chef to chef, right. let's be honest, you can't call yourself a chef if you serve that shit. And I'm not just blaming you. I've got to bring in the general manager. Yeah? Yeah, it's out on board. I yeah, it's, it's just... important yeah. to blame, of course I do. Yeah, but, you know, it, 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 it was bad. Huh? I mean, the whole experience was bad. Then you look around and you look at the customers. Half them would be eaten for nothing. Uh, yeah, on yeah on the buy one get one free vouchers that have been in place historically to attract people through the door. The spend per head is very low because. But more importantly, they're dying off, aren't they? Well, yeah. I was I mean, the youngest one in there by 40 years today. It's the first time I've sat in fucking a dining room and felt so young. We're going down quickly, yet no one seems to realise how quickly we are sinking. Fuck me, there's some cobwebs that need blasting here. I tell you. The Priory's a hundred-seater restaurant in an old convent, and it's full of bad habits. The venue's heavenly, but head chef Toby's food straight from hell. Rookie restaurateur Scott Aitchison bought a business losing a fortune with food given away in vouchers. I'm the Priory's last chance of salvation. It's my toughest task yet. Tonight, the restaurant's going to be absolutely packed with the two-for-one voucher brigade. So, Toby's going to be busy and it'll give me a chance to see him in action. How can professional chefs struggle to get a simple carvery out twice a day? What the fuck is he doing? Eating Toby's lunch was like chewing carpet. But it's no wonder when all I can find in his fridge are old, half-eaten joints set to be used again. What are we going to do with that? Feel it's, that... It's rock hard, yeah, I know. And it usually goes in the bin because we don't get so many covers at the moment. So, so how many of them do you put in the bin? Roughly. Three a week? Maybe. So right now you've got a meat mountain, yeah? I use it up as sandwiches. Some of it, if it's any good, we put it back out. Fuck me, what's that? Those we won't use. But what's that? Lamb. Lamb? Have a look at it. You know your meat, don't you? Especially when it's fucking rotten. Look at it. I think you're not being very honest with me now. You know no, that. They don't go off. The turkey breast is still warm. And that's three hours ago. What happens when you wrap things in cling film when they're still warm? Come on, mate. It still carries on bacteria and all the rest of it. That's right. So it cools down and stays hot inside, cools down the outside and festers. And the bacteria yeah, grows, then on. you put it back out on the carvery. Not very often, no, but some of the time, yes, we do. Fucking hell. This is page one of food hygiene. Even my most junior chef would know that this is dangerous practice. If this stuff goes out, we're all dead meat. But how are Toby starters? What's in here? That's a broccoli soup. That's broccoli soup? No, it's not broccoli soup. It needs to thicken up. I haven't got round to well, Okay. I didn't thicken it up yesterday. Okay. Looks like vomit. I've not finished the whole thing, so 
You are a lazy fucker, you know that. Oh yeah, well I'm that saying. I haven't had time to finish it. Well no, alright, I did have time, but I never got around to finishing it off. Do me a big favour. Fucking ditch it. Toby's incompetence is flushing the priory down the plug hole. I've never met such a gormless head chef. If his prep is this bad, Lord help us with the rest of service. Right, so Toby, your cheese sauce. Explain the recipe. Comes out of a packet. Out of a packet. Bastard. Sorry? No, not you, my oven. So all the veggies prepped? No, just the carrots and the potatoes coming prepped up. This is more expensive this way. Yes. Are they hot inside? Uh, I've put them in the oven. You steamed them? Where? Why are they soaking wet? Look at the sponge there. Honestly, it's like King Kong's fucking condom. <laughs> Look at it. This is fucking horrendous. Personally, I've never quite seen anything of that fucking bad. The fucking meat is cooked for hours, then stuck in a hot cupboard to go dry, run up to the fucking carvery. The sauces are from a fucking packet, the Yorkshire puddings are frozen, and then the chef is totally oblivious to what he's fucking serving. Upstairs, the Meals and Wills Brigade aren't belly aching. But then who would when they're giving it away? Hey, well. You well? You got a voucher? Yeah, I have a dish. Two meals for the price of one at a tenner, that's got to be less than it cost to put it on a plate. Matt's the general manager and knows the priory's in purgatory. He thinks restaurant novice Scott's mad to have bought the business. It's got so many uh, potential failings in it and huge costs to keep it running. If, if you've never run a restaurant before, then this probably wouldn't be your number one choice, but uh, it certainly wouldn't be mine. But Scott's drowning. Parading stiffly in his suit and tie, he's more bank clerk than passionate restaurateur. This man's in way over his head. I don't think you quite understand how bad it is. You may have one of the most beautiful, fucking stunning dining rooms in Britain today. I'll agree with you on that one. But fuck me, this is one of the worst kitchens I've ever been in. And then I'm fucking looking at you thinking, how can you let all this go on under your nose with the instinct that you have for business? and not understand that this fucking place is going down the path. There's so many things in this place that I've looked at and said, this is all wrong, it's, got, it's, it's where to start. Right now, it's worse than hospital food. And we're not cooking, we're not a carvery, we're a fucking mess. Tomorrow morning, yeah. I want to see you and your team at 9.30, because I can't go any further unless we make some radical changes. It's now my second day at the Priory and I need to act swiftly. After the horrors of last night's service, I decide to raid the kitchen early before the staff arrive. God. Jesus Christ. What is that? Bloody hell. Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking hell. How old is that? Uh, it's been there since fucking 1981. Look at it. Oh, shit. The smell. Bingo. Fucking hell. Parsnips. Look at them. Fucking hell. What is that? What's that for? You can't cook in this. You can't even attempt to start thinking of a new menu. The only thing to do now to condemn the fucking kitchen. Fucking disgusting. Shut it down. No way. Anything is gonna be fucking cooked in here. I fucking hate here. Dirty fucking lazy pigs. And I mean gutted. Out. You gotta learn the hard way, big boy. Closed. Mm. Carvery. My fucking ass. I'm covering my ass. Where are the fuckers? Coming this morning. Condemning the kitchen's a last resort, but for this clueless bunch, it's a kick up the ass they need. But it won't be as half as painful as the bollocking I'm about to give them. It's amazing. Have a good look round. Matt. Yeah. Scott. In you go. Back there. That came out of there. Who threw all the veg in there like that last night? Not rats. Parsnips that you could tie a knot in. Fucking cauliflower that's got mold in it. 
What's going on, guys? We're all responsible for what we put in the fridge, yeah. Can't just hold my hands up and say it was just me. That's not good enough, Toby. You better get your fucking fat head outside your ass and start understanding what the fuck was going on here. Scott, I'm not your voice. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. No. This is your responsibility. You've bought into this and you've taken this on your shoulders. Absolutely. We've, I've had this conversation with the guys a couple of weeks ago about cleaning this kitchen up, about getting it ready for service. Scott, you have to get real. But it's... You have got to get real. I'm so fucking annoyed. This is disgusting. Matt, you may come in one day a week, two days a week, whatever, but give me something, well, will you? You're, you're a chef. You trained as a chef. Yeah. Well, Rumour has it the food's fucking ten times better when you're cooking. That's the rumours. Well, I'd like to think I wouldn't leave the kitchen in that state, no. no I'd have to go around and get 50% of those customers last night, fucking knock on the door this morning and fucking walk them in this kitchen. Then where would we be? I just can't understand why you guys left it like a shithole. Knowing that Gordon was coming back this morning, I, that wrecks my head even more than anything. I'm getting some fresh air because I feel sick. Unfucking believable. I mean, absolutely fucking disgusting. Most chefs I know would be fucking embarrassed for what I've just done to that kitchen. And Toby, well, he didn't even fucking react. Scott, well, that guy's just sunk 300 grand into this fucking shithole. He's oblivious. And as for Matt, well, he seems to be the only one that actually cares. He's deeply embarrassed. Cannot believe the shit in that kitchen. It's time for a meeting with a bank manager. Scott's only been in the restaurant trade for six weeks, but he won't last long at this rate. I've been running restaurants for 15 years, and to succeed, you must have passion. I need to inject some into stuffy Scott. You've remorged the house. How worried are you? Yeah, I'm very worried because it's my, it's my livelihood on the line, it's my career, it's my family that I'm putting on the line for the success of this business. You've just, you've treaded water for yeah. the last two months. Yeah, I accept that, but again, you know, it's my, my lack of understanding of the business. If I was a, a, already a successful restaurateur, yeah. I could have come in here and said, right now, I understand the business, yeah. this is what I expect a restaurant to run like. You run with me or yeah. go and find another yeah. job, but... But it doesn't stop you yeah. going around and looking at fucking things and checking under the fucking fridge and asking the chef, you know, what the fuck's going on? Because yeah. you can't just walk in like a vicar and be nice to everybody, welcome them, thanks for coming up to work. Uh, yeah, I'm fucking paying you. My house is the security that's guaranteeing your salary. I pray Scott's sins will be forgiven, but to save the Priory, it's his staff I need to pardon. A confessional was used by the Priory's Catholic nuns and perhaps a few Hail Marys could help the kitchen crew purge their sins. What's the worst thing you've ever seen here? Ever? Worst thing? I'd have to say meat getting taken out of the oven and dropped on the floor, picked up quickly, put back on the hot tray, put in the hot cupboard. I just don't want the car to collapse, or the priory to collapse. It's, uh, it's a good... It has collapsed. Oh, yeah. And it's losing money mm. between four and 5,000 a week. <laughs> so, I don't know who's telling you pork is, but the Calvary's fucked, right. and the priory's in the shit. Does the Calvary frustrate you? Sometimes, yes. Because it's just the same thing day after day. It's mundane. And that's probably half the problem. Not nice, is it? No. Jumping in and out of the freezer for Yorkshire pudding. Why haven't you tried to do anything about it? Because I've just got in a rut. I so desperately want to get out of that rut. And hey, big boy. Hey, I'm here to help you. Right. With the kitchen sinners absolved, general manager Matt needs to unburden himself. He's also a cardinal sinner in my eyes. How do you motivate staff as a general manager? Probably not very well at the moment, because I'm probably demotivated and deflated myself, in all honesty. How hungry are you to make it work? Very much, very much indeed. I've always said I treat this like my own business, which sounds really fucking stupid sitting here. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the state that we're in at the moment. Mm -hmm. You want it 
to care succeed, about it. though, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I care about it, and I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want it to uh, go the way it's going. Gone. The Priory staff are so stuck in a rut, and it's the carvery that's the problem. I need to relight the fire in these guys with a new concept that will excite them and appeal to the younger, wealthier crowd to fill that hundred-seater venue. Hayward Thief is packed with affluent individuals. The place is littered with restaurants, but what it hasn't got is a good, honest grill. Personally, ditch the fucking carvery, get rid of the festering meat, and out with the old, in with the new, and get hold of some good, local, honest produce and cook it simply. Nothing more than that. This local farm supplies my restaurants with beef, and it's going to answer our prayers. I've invited the team along to brief them on my idea that the Priory should become a grill. Some people just can't help putting their foot in it. Toby, watch out for the cow pack. Well, I'm yeah. worried about those. You can't fucking miss them. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? This is some of the best home-reared beef in the country. And we have got it wrong at the Priory. What we need to do now at the Priory is to ditch the carvery and turn that restaurant into a grill, supplied locally with phenomenal beef that starts at the top of the menu. I'm hoping that getting hands-on with this prime stock will motivate the team. Right, who'd like to ride it? Toby, you go first. <laughs> to help me inspire the guys, I've invited a meat expert right. to test them on their cuts of beef. So the sirloin is where? Down here, isn't it? Down there. Sirloin basically starts there, and you count back in one, two, three ribs of the of the 13 rib rib cage. That is a sirloin. Toby, where is the brisket? It's here. Comes from the back end where? About there. Your brisket runs from the first five ribs parallel underneath its front leg. Matt, where would we get the top side from? Embarrassingly so, I haven't got a bloody clue. Have um, an educated guess. Well, I hope it's going to be up the top somewhere <laughs> for a start. These guys are more denser than Mensa, but at last they're getting to grips with great beef. Scott, think about this one then. Yeah. I know you're not a chef, you're an IT consultant. Yeah? Show me you. where you would get the oxtail from. Do you mind if I roll my sleeve up? Well done. 100% accurate. 100% accurate. Back at the Priory, I've thrown out the old kitchen and had £6,000 of impressive new grill kit installed along with a new chipper. We can now hit the ground running and start making money. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. A proper yeah. grill. A proper fryer. There's no excuse now. Scott the suit should be embracing the grill with gusto. But face to face with it, he loses his bottle. His attitude is getting to me. What you've got to understand is I am, you know, you, you do understand I'm new to the business. So it's a radical, radical change for what I've seen has been here already for 20 years. The carver, and it's, it's been the cash cow for the business. To kind of suddenly cut it off is obviously the, is a concern, but... Scott. What we've got to do... Yeah, yeah. no, I understand. Yeah. You're there's, losing there's, five grand no, no, no. a week. Yeah. There's no cash cow. This is what, this is, this is what you bought. No. You've bought a head fuck. Well, I wouldn't put it in those terms, but yeah. OK, I understand exactly what you're saying. OK, yeah, no, so a restaurant that's yeah. losing five grand a week, four grand a week, what is it then? It's, it's a business that needs to turn it around. It's the same phrase, but just used in a polite way. It's shit, Scott. You can't have it both ways. You can't step in new territory and evolve and, and become somewhat dynamic in what you're trying to do. Yeah, you and to still lead the fight. You? You've got to. Matt, I need a bit of support here. I need 100% of the bill being paid yeah. so as we don't come in with a semi-deluded insight that our business is functioning, yet we're giving 50% of it away. We don't have to sell that to me. Good. We seriously don't. Help me out. No, I'm going to give you five minutes on your own because I don't think you get it. See you later. OK. I can't believe Scott. He is such a fucking slippery eel. For God's sake, embrace the grill. Get excited about it. Grab it and run with it. 
It could become fucking phenomenal. There's no halfway house here, yeah? Change or die. I'm at the Priory in Haywards Heath. I've ditched their carvery and installed a brand new grill. I'm desperate to reopen tonight, but novice restaurateur Scott's lost his nerve. Now he slept on it, I hope he's embraced the idea. Otherwise, it's game over. Are you well? Hi, Gordon. Good morning. Yeah? Good to see you? Yeah. Come right. Have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> now, Clean you've had a chance bit. to sleep on it? Yeah. Yeah? First thought this morning when you woke up? Excited? Um, yes. Or shitting yourself? Uh, a little bit of both. Bit of both? A bit like being told that it, and suddenly your wife says she's pregnant. Right. Loads of excitement, thinking great news, great news, and then suddenly the realisation of, OK, I mean, how the hell are we going to do this? Yeah. What are we going to do? Where are we going forward? So, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, really, really excited today. Massive opportunity to move on. The fright is now on the grill, but tonight's a dress rehearsal. Yeah, exactly. A very yeah. simple menu, and let's charge for three courses, 20 quid. Now, that's not expensive. And tonight, for the first time in the history of this fucking restaurant, we're not giving anything away. These chefs aren't the sharpest knives in the drawer. So for this bunch, I've deliberately chosen a trial menu that's easy to prepare and can be turned around in large numbers. First starter, mackerel salad with some fresh chives, yeah? Yeah, yeah. mixed in at the end. Yeah. I smoke mackerel fillets, bang, three. So basically, vinaigrette, yeah. round, and bang. Bingo. Beetroot salad. Feta, pine nut, and rocket. What's that in there? About some of the dressing. That's right. Over. Dress the beetroot. Something fresh, simple, fragrant. How can we fuck that up? We can't, really. really. The main courses will be ribeye steak, salmon, and spatchcock chicken. Toby's on the grill. This menu and grill don't take this the wrong way, but it's idiot-proof. Right, can you do that? Yeah. Are you anxious? I am, yes. Good. That's healthy. Well, I'll fuck it all up. No, I don't want you to fuck it all up either. Matt, the general manager's heading up the front of house. He's a trained chef, so he can see the advantages of the grill. God knows about the rest of them. I am anxious that it is all going to work out, and it's completely diverse to what we've done before. Uh, it's what we need to do. Um, and it's the only way forward out of this uh, carvery situation, so it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll keep telling myself that. The first customers are arriving for the dress rehearsal dinner. Amongst them, a group of rather spiritual special guests. I've invited the Bishop of Sussex to head up a VIP table of local clergymen. If the kitchen stuff up, at least they'll grant forgiveness. I've asked him to bless this kitchen and how he may wish that we never see a broccoli soup like we made <laughs> yeah. last week anywhere right. near the building. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of food to delight us and to feed us. And we ask your blessing upon this kitchen and these guys uh, working here. Give them a sense of serenity in the midst of the pressures they are under. And we pray a special blessing upon Gordon. We know he needs it. And we ask you to bless this kitchen in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. OK. First order. Thank you. Big deep breath. Fill up those things. Fill them up, fill them up. Big enough, yeah. Fill them up. Now, let it go. Right, two covers, one seat of salad to start and one smoked mackerel. Two ribeyes, one medium rare, one medium, two chips, two courgettes. Yes, yes chef. chef. Bingo. Come on, Bobby. I need you tonight, you know that? Yeah. Yeah, I know you're waiting on a hip replacement, but fuck me. Hey, I'm waiting on a fucking smoked mackerel salad. Yeah? Not right, Chef. No, because you put the balsam and vinegar around there, and it's just, what's Olive, the balsam? Olive oil. That's what the has to do with the salad. Oh, fuck me. I can't believe on, it. Bobby. Bob screwed up the dressing on the first dish. All Stuart's got to do is fry courgettes and chips. But this guy's on another planet. Right, what's going next? Where's the courgettes, please? Uh, tell me next. What? Excuse me, hello, look, tell me now, the courgettes are fucking raw. God. I honestly didn't realise steak and chips could be so fucking difficult. 
And as the orders mount, it's the return of the zombie on the grill. Toby can't run a kitchen and cook at the same time. Again, again, fucking season them. Salt, pepper, olive oil, tray. You can't just throw a chicken on a fucking grill and expect it to fucking, hey, cook. You haven't seasoned them again. Oh, fuck's sake. Kill them. Try not to throw it on there, yeah? We're fucking cooking, we're not playing darts. With Toby screwing up, he's now way behind with the orders. And two hours into service, tables are still waiting for their food. First thing they did when we came in was take our order. And then half an hour later, we sat down, waited half an hour for our starter. And now it's five past, past nine. Quarter past seven, and the table was filled. Quarter past seven, 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 we hope that we uh, make a virtue of patience. So, hey. Absolutely. <laughs> We're not unhappy. Oh, it's yeah. one of the fruits of the spirit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tonight's menu is so simple, any head chef worth his salt should be able to cope. There's too much oil on there. Too much oil on there. What the fuck? Would you seriously eat that? Hey, would you eat that? Seriously? No. Where are you at in the queue? Perfectly honest, I don't fucking know. I'm going down very fast. I haven't got a fucking clue. At worst, I'd hope Toby would muddle through tonight. But this guy clearly isn't a head chef. It's one calamity after another. Big deep breath. Hey. Hey, hey. I'll do the pass. Yeah? I'll stand alongside you and cook. Hey, look at me. Can you do it? Give me five minutes. Five minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes, yeah? Yeah? Fucking hell. Look. I mean, there's burnt shit everywhere. Going in pieces. Don't know what happened there. Right, where's fucking Toby? Come on, you can't throw the towel in. I can't believe Toby's walked out. He's letting everyone down. Three beetroot salad, two chicken, one salmon. No answer. Hello, Muppets! Oh. The kitchen's now even further behind with the orders, and the night's a disaster. He's got his uh, sauce. We've been waiting for a sauce here to start, and no salad. And he hasn't got any main course. Scott's getting it in the neck from the customers. Less than a minute for the soup. Yeah, I understand that. Sorry about that. The new menu, it's the first night, so I understand it's been, a, it's been challenging for you guys. You're not going to dinner yet. 30 people out there do not want to pay for their dinner. Oh, well, I... Fucked up, that one, so... We're not doing 30 out of 50, we're doing, like, 30 out of 60. That's what I've got up there telling me is not going to pay for their dinner. 30 people at the moment. Starters, main courses and desserts, 30 people. Ask the fucking bishop to take the place over and help... Get him to hold a service here on Sunday. It'll be more fucking successful. Tonight's been a fucking disaster. That was bad. Watching the first fucking 15 minutes, the way you organise your kitchen, as far as I'm concerned, fucking midnight now, mate, you're not capable of running a fucking bath. Yeah. And then you disappear because you're pissed off. I'm really sorry, but tomorrow we're going to readjust. If this place has got a chance to fucking turn around, Matt, I want you running the kitchen tomorrow. You have to concentrate tomorrow night. And all I want you to do is cook. There's such an amazing opportunity here, to fucking, to turn this place around and for everyone to pull on the rope. And I get an attitude like that. Where's your spunk and fucking pizzazz? So you've got all this fucking new stuff in here, the roller coaster week we've been on, and you, and, and you just want to fucking jerk off out the door because it's fucked up tonight. We cannot give up. We stay united. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of you have to come in here tomorrow morning as a team. Just a fucking dynamic team to really want to do something fucking different. Restart. Thank you. Tough on that one last night. Scott's going to have to understand if he wants to turn this place around, then he's going to have to invest in proper staff. Toby is not the head chef of the grill. I'm going to focus in the kitchen today with Matt and get some sort of power in there, some assertive strength. Hopefully, it should be a vast improvement on last night's service, because that was a fucking nightmare. With tonight's launch only hours away, I can't afford another disaster like last night. The stakes are even higher as I'm introducing a bigger menu. Rumpsteak, ribeye, fillet. 
chicken, lamb, tuna, salmon. So we've like almost sort of doubled. With Matt at the helm controlling the kitchen, it's a gamble. And I'm hoping that the potential I see in him will pay off. I like your assertiveness. You command a lot of sort of, you know, power. It's nice. Right. Spread it around. Offload it on them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tough job. With the priory menu completely revamped, we've got to get the message out. At the railway station, hundreds of city slickers are returning home. They're just the wealthy crowd I want eating at the Priory every week now that the Carberry's finally gone. Steak sandwich? Come on, don't be shy. I'm going to tempt them with some prime steak. And it's Scott's job to market the grill and keep the campaign going. Anyone heard of the Priory? This is a relaunch of the Priory. What are those? What do you think of that steak, sir? Fantastic, really yeah? Good. Fresh, new, innovative, fantastic food. And we want all you guys in there. Eating at the Carberry, have you? Mm -hmm. No, it's a lovely Peter B. Give yourself a little sandwich. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> You're what? So How can you do that? It's launch night, and the marketing effort's pulling in a younger, hipper crowd to the Priory. These are the people who will help the business grow. There's 80 books, so we need to impress them to keep them coming back. So it's time to put a rocket over these space cadets before liftoff. Are we ready, guys? Yeah, big night. Yeah, I'm watching you like a fucking hawk, yeah? yeah? I'm going to be a fucking CCT camera up your asshole. yeah? Show me the grill. Yeah. Show me the grill! One more. Show me the grill! One more. Show me the grill! That's bollocks. Show me the grill! One more. Show me the grill! One more. Show me the grill! That's it. Excellent, Matt. Yeah. Too smooth to move. <laughs> <laughs> Too smooth to move! Too smooth to move. Excellent. Good luck. Make it work, yes? Excellent. Check on table 11, two covers. One mackerel, one meat, one new potatoes, two chips, one courgette. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Good. Tonight, I'm leaving Matt to it. There's no more babysitting, and these guys need to show me they can step up to the plate. I want that medium. Yeah. Yeah, looking pretty raw on the side to me. Drop the fucking griddle, yeah? yeah? Right, three mackerel, please, Tom. Yeah, I need those next. Yes, chef. Stewie, I really need those sides, Bubba. Watch your salmon. Yeah, table nine. It yeah. looks like it's fucking been oh, Mike Tyson. Yeah? These are going cold, Toby, but yeah. Oh, no, well, I've just yeah. the salmon, yeah. haven't I? Yeah. Right. Hey, hey, big boy, that's no way to talk to the fucking general manager. Where, yeah. where, where, where's your respect? Oh, I'm getting that Groundhog Day feeling. Matt really needs to hold the kitchen together. Upstairs in the restaurant, the food is getting out, but there are glitches. Sorry about the tuna. Whose was it? Damn. Was it way overcooked? Yeah. yeah. Is that seared? That one. That one. This one. No. If no. Nothing is on the grill. No. That one. No. Nothing on the grill. No. Should I call that and confuse you? No. I'll, I'll keep it for a moment. Should I? Yeah. I'll keep it yes. for a moment. If you ain't got a job, fucking well. Despite know, Toby's yeah. tantrums, Matt has a firm grip on things, Medium. and I'm impressed with how he's keeping his cool. Medium. And Matt's control of the kitchen is paying off in the restaurant. At last, the grill menu's going down well. And darling, what did you have? I had salmon. Salmon. It's very nice. Yeah. Nice, very nice. Are you missing the carvery? No. We've been coming here for on and off for the last ten years. Really? We've been Haverty. Right. And I think it run it run its course. Yeah. The carvery. It's time for a change. Yeah. And this is excellent. Well, that's very kind. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And please Thank you. come back. Five days ago, the Priory was churning out plates of crap carvery for a fiver. Tonight, with freshly cooked food from the grill, the restaurant's making money, and the vicar's almost enthusiastic. £3,200 we've taken. We did 80 covers tonight. Um, you know, working that out through 80 covers, that's £40 a head spend. You know, clearly the concept um, of a grill works. You know, I think it's going to be very successful. So that's very good. So I'm really, you know, I'm kind of buzzing now. I'm tired from the week, but, you know, very excited. Matt's been the Priory saviour tonight. His strength kept the kitchen going, despite his flock's obvious flaws. If you weren't in the kitchen tonight, nothing would have come out. You are the sole key individual that can be instrumental at turning this fucking business around, and I really mean that. Thank you. And so don't let go of that strength, I swear to God. Because if you let go, they're all fucked. Now we've done this tonight, this is, this is where I wanted to go. You know, this is where we are, this is where we are going. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Well done. Good. Thank you. Cheers. I'll see you in a month.
Yeah. And fuck me, I can't wait to come back. I'm dying okay. to find out who's going to be the fucking head chef. All right. Good turnaround. Um, the difference from the carvery to the grill, night and day. Um, fuck me, Scott has got an asset in Matt, and if he lets Matt do his job, then restart the kitchen, focus, menus there, run with it, because it's hardly fucking rocket science. It's six weeks since I was in Haywards Heath. I left the Priory Grill with a packed congregation making a healthy profit. I'm back and I can't wait to find out what the score is. I'm hoping that Matt has still got a grip of the kitchen and Scott has been pushing the business forward and getting the message out there. Hey. Hi, big boy. I'm well, are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. You're still in the kitchen? <laughs> I am. Good news. Yeah. Very good news. Toby, where is he? Day off? Toby's gone. Toby's gone? Yep. That's, uh, that's a positive decision. Toby was sacked for preparing chicken that was off. He disputes this, but left anyway. So has the business taken off? How's it been? Uh, not busy enough. Really? Seriously not busy Lunch enough. and dinner, or? Um, we've probably done about 230 covers or thereabouts every week. Every, is that all? 230? Yeah. Christ. Yeah, we were doing, on Carberry, I suppose, what, seven, 700 as an average? Christ. So from so, yeah. 700, you lost 500 covers? It comes down to advertising. We're not advertising what we're doing. You know, we haven't, we haven't said we're, we're not a Carberry. We've gone back to Carberry on the weekend. Carberry's back? One day a week, guest appearance. I just think it's a massive, massive golden opportunity that we have potentially fucked up so far. Oh, fucking so frustrating. Unbelievable. The Carberry's back and the business is failing. What's the vicar gone and done? Scott, how are you? Hey, Gordon. Yeah, very well, thank you. I was until I heard the news. We're down by 500 covers. The message is still not out there. And the carvery's come back. I, I, I think you made a big mistake. You were sending a conflicted message by having a carvery on a Sunday. Why can't I just have a simple roast and plate it? Because that isn't what the customers around here are telling me that they want. No. I get, I get, I get You're losing people... confidence, Scott. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not about that, Gordon. It's a, it's a, it's a dinosaur, that fucking thing. What message have you put out there about a grill taking place? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand here and say we've got it all, you know, everything sorted out and we've got it going. Are we ready to bring in 80 covers and do it well? I don't think we still are. He could cope with that. On the back of doing 80 in front of me with a fucking handicapped fucking brigade, you know, no disrespect to Toby, but, you know, he didn't have the fucking strongest fucking influence in the kitchen. I'm more confident, six weeks down the line, you could be doing 150 on a Saturday night. I just think it's a missed opportunity. I'm infuriated with Scott. He's so weak-willed and he's forgotten the lesson of the marketing campaign I started at the rail station. I call an urgent meeting with his staff to shock him into action. Your asset is driving the fucking business. Marketing, selling your fucking business and standing there like a fucking salesman, driving it. And you've got to loosen up and embrace your staff Listen to them and move forward together. I think sometimes that you're so fucking worried about your persona in front of them because of your weakness in the industry. I'm seriously trying to help you do this, Scott. Yeah, seriously, there is no other, you know, ultimatum kind of thing that we're, we're doing it is to help do this and make it run more smoothly. We're going out the streets today and we're gonna fucking drum up some business. And ties are banned. Why? What's wrong with being smartly dressed and turned out? Nice Nothing wrong with being smart. So if I want to wear a tie, no, you're not. Let me finish. Let me finish. tell you. Yeah, go on. In. Before we get all fucking angry and take a swipe, <laughs> and fuck me, am I quick? There's a level of casualness when you've got an open neck shirt, rather than an office point of view with a fucking shirt and tie on. Are you worried about the tie? It's a nice tie. <laughs> <laughs> on or off? Off. On or off? Off. On or off? Off. <laughs> Yeah, you can off as well. <laughs> Is it coming off? It's yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay, it's nice now. Well, that's better. It's All right, I'll take my tie off. Side. Freed from the shackles of his suit and tie, Scott's got to rev up his marketing drive. Oh, it's what he should have been doing six weeks ago, and now we need all hands on deck. Ready? Big smile. Mr. Ashton, turn lead the way. Let's go, ladies. <laughs> Yesterday, they had seven for dinner. Tonight, I want a full house. Yes, come on, Matt. Get in there. What you Come on. Get in there. What are you Go on. Lovely. Let's go. It's the young and wealthy Scott needs to attract. They're the future for his restaurant. 
and we've got a booking for you tonight. You're going to come in and visit us, so we can show you a real good time, and you, get, you know it'll be buzzing. Four of us at 7.30. 7.30, fantastic. <laughs> After less than an hour, the Priory's 100 seats are filling up. Seven at 8.45. We're nearly fully booked for tonight, and you still look unhappy. I'm loving it. Oh. Absolutely. I'm, no, I love it. I love it. I'm not unhappy. Oh, <laughs> Spreading the good word on the streets has paid off, and tonight the Priory's full of customers. Has Scott finally repented for his marketing sins? Yeah, I've learned from today that it's the you know it's the marketing that's the most important thing. A lot of these people have never been here before and they're now raving about it. So, yeah, that's absolutely what we need to do now. They're young, they're vibrant, yeah. and it's exactly the kind of customers that you deserve, yeah? Drive it. Thank you very yeah? much, yeah. And I mean drive it. And don't yeah. stop driving it, yeah? No, exactly. It's and not a one-day thing, is it? It's uh, no. ongoing, yeah. No, 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 no. And do me one more favour. Yeah. yeah. Undo another button. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <sighs> Scott now just needs to drive it. Business doesn't just come and sit on your lap. You've got to go looking for it. And if you don't, you're going to fail.